The Kremlin spoke about negotiations with Ukraine amid the counteroffensive of the Ukrainian armed forces in the east of Ukraine. The conversations were becoming louder and more insistent with each new defeat of the Russian army on the front line. First, the Kremlin put forward ultimatums, essentially demanding the surrender of Ukraine. But after the sham referendums in the temporarily occupied regions and the illegal inclusion of the territories of Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, Kherson regions into Russia, Kiev announced that negotiations are out of the question as long as Putin is the head of the Kremlin. According to the Ukrainian government, Russia demonstrated its real intentions – not to establish peace, but to destroy Ukraine with rocket attacks on residential buildings that killed hundreds of civilians. Does the terrorist state want peace? Obviously not. Russia proves it every day and every night. Zaporizhia is one of the Ukrainian cities Russia directs its missile terror against. Russian strikes and ordinary residential buildings in Zaporizhia killed at least 14 people. When someone wants to negotiate, they do not do such sin. But the Kremlin has a peculiar logic. They are talking about peace in the morning and then launch rockets into residential areas and critical infrastructure in the afternoon. President Putin's escalating barrages on Ukraine's infrastructure are evidence that he has no genuine interest in negotiation or meaningful diplomacy. Instead, he is trying to break Ukraine's will to fight by bombing and freezing its civilians into submission. But he will not succeed because Ukraine is fighting for its freedom and for the future of its children. And we will do everything in our power to keep hope alive in Ukraine. Analysts at the Institute for the Study of War believe that Russia's talks are seeking preemptive consensions from the West. In particular, the reduction of financial and military assistance to Ukraine, the recognition of Russia's illegal occupation of Ukrainian territories, and the restrictions on NATO and Western military operations in Europe. In addition, Russia will use any truce to build up forces for a new strike. The Russians are trying to find an off-ramp that would be a phony off-ramp, by which I mean, oh, let's have a ceasefire, let's just freeze things in place, get a frozen conflict, never negotiate about the territory that they have seized and continue to hold, rest, refit, regroup, re-attack. There's always an off-ramp, and it's very simple. President Putin started this war, he could end it tomorrow. Antony Blinken, United States Secretary of State. We want peace. The Ukrainians want peace. The transatlantic community wants peace. What we don't want is a pause. Uh, because if we have a pause instead of peace, uh, we know that President Putin will use that pause to retool, to refit, to regroup, uh, and to, in all likelihood, go back into Ukraine with renewed vengeance. Uh, and that is not in the interests of a just peace, it is certainly not in the interests of a durable peace. Despite a clear message from the civilized world that negotiations are impossible until Russia withdraws its troops from Ukraine and abandons its imperial plans, the Kremlin needs negotiations. The Kremlin needs at least talk of negotiations for the domestic consumer to demonstrate that someone still takes Russia into account in the international arena. Reported by Dana Kolasnik, Ksenia Barvinenko, UATV News.